Well, water bath canning is my favorite um, canning method. Water bath canning is for all high acid fruits and vegetables and um, jams and jellies, syrups, those kind of things. So um, that differs from pressure canning. So water bath canning, you use a um, water bath canner and these are big kettles with um, racks in the bottom and um, your jar can never touch the bottom of your canner because that's what causes um, jar breakage. So always make sure you have a rack. I got a call the other day from a lady that who had never canned before. She wanted to make apple pie filling. So she said, can I just can that in my biggest kettle I have at home? And I said, well, how tall is your biggest kettle? She said, well, maybe six inches. And I was like, uh, no, because you want to can that in pints. And your water in your canner has to be one to two inches above your tallest jar. So um, that's why these are really tall. They will accommodate quart jars, pint jars, your little jelly jars, and, and they do very well. When you're um, doing water bath canning, be sure that you only use one size of jar in your canner per load. So you can't mix quarts and pints and jelly jars because they all can at a different, um, different time. Whether you're water bath canning or pressure canning, there are some important things you do need to remember. Everywhere in Wyoming is high altitude. Anything above 3,000 feet is considered high altitude. So you need to make those adjustments for every recipe you do. And in your ball blue book is an altitude adjustment chart. So you would find the recipe in your book that you were going to do in your water bath canning and then adjust it accordingly to your altitude adjustment. Um, it has often been said that cooking and baking are an art. Canning is a science. Baking and cooking, you can alter your recipes, add spices, add herbs, add different ingredients, and it's really not going to alter the food safety of that recipe. Canning, on the other hand, is based on a lot of science and a lot of testing and a lot of um, very specific measurements, um, times, altitude adjustments. So whether you're water bath canning or pressure canning, there are no um, altering of those recipes. So when we talk about our canners, this, many of you have seen the um, older style brand canners. They are less expensive and um, can be purchased pretty much um, hardware stores, department, you know, like Walmart, um, farm and ranch supply stores. And, and they're a really good way to start pressure canning. Once you kind of have decided that, yeah, I really like this and I'm ready to invest maybe in some higher end equipment, um, then you could upgrade to this stainless steel water bath canner, again, with a rack in the bottom. And both of these canners have flat racks in the bottom, so you can get a lot more jars into your canner. So I would check that out. Um, before you buy your canner, some racks have ridges that go along these joints, and then that limits um, the amount of jars you can get in your canner. So you need to remember that the water in your canner needs to be able to be one to two inches above your um, jars. There are some things that help make your water bath canning um, more successful if you use the proper ingredients. So um, 
In my canners, I always pour a little bit of vinegar into the water before I um, put my jars in. We have really hot, hard water here in Niobrara County. So as you can see, this canner has kind of a um, mineral film on it after years of using it. However, if I didn't put the vinegar in, it'd be even more mineral content. It also helps keep the mineral content off of your jars and they come out a lot more sparkling and um, you don't need to do as much cleaning on them. So vinegar is good. You also will need vinegar in lots of your recipes like your pickle recipes. So you need to make sure it um, is high enough acidity, which is 5%. It will say it on the label. And um, most of the candy recipes um, call for distilled vinegar rather than apple cider vinegar. But be sure to read your recipe and make sure you're using the correct um, kind of vinegar. Other things you will need if you're going to do tomatoes are lemon juice. Um, we have bred the tomatoes to a point where they don't have any acid content left in them. So if you're going to can, can them in a water bath canner or in your pressure canner, you need to add that acid back into the tomatoes and it will tell you the amount of lemon juice to add. And this is just bottled lemon juice. That is better than using fresh lemon juice because it is consistent acidity again. If you're going to make lime pickles, be sure you use food grade lime and you can buy this at your canning supply counter. Um, you cannot use lime that you purchase at the feed store. Um, so be sure you buy pickling lime at the canning store. Other things that are available, well, and if you're going to use um, salt, a lot of the recipes call for salt, use canning salt, not table salt. Table salt has iodine added to it, and that will make your brine cloudy. Canning and pickling salt does not have iodine added, and so it leaves your brine very clear. It, when you're using spices and herbs in your canning, Make sure that they are fresh every year when you start for the best quality product. And um, this is just mixed pickling spice. So whatever spice your recipe calls for, make sure that they are still good and fresh. Other things that you'll find in the canning aisle are things um, already made up spice mixes for lots of different products. Today I have bread and butter pickles and salsa, but they come in many different flavors. There's berry pie filling, so you can use these. It's kind of a shortcut. They have all the measuring done. You just dump this, um, this one into your tomatoes and um, some vinegar, and this one into your um, cucumbers. So, that's kind of a quicker and easier way to do different products. All high acid foods need to be processed in a water bath canner. And in a little bit, we're gonna talk about jams and jellies, syrups, those kind of things. They also need to be processed in a water bath canner. One of the newer um, pieces of equipment on the market and these took a long time to um, get approved through the USDA as acceptable pieces of equipment for canning. And this is a steam canner, and you can um, can up to pint jars in it, and it has a rack. You fill the bottom, this little water reservoir, with two and a half quarts of water. You set your rack in here, Put your jars on, and on the lid is a dial, and it's according to um, altitude. So our altitude here in Lusk is 5,000 feet, so 
we are out to, or we are zone number two. And so you have to bring the water up to a boil till it reaches um, the appropriate temperature on zone number two. Then you start your timing. It, it has a vent hole here in the back. So you put that in the back. The advantage to a steam canner is it's quicker because you're not heating up gallons of water like you are in here. You're heating up a gallon and a half of water and bringing that to a boil. And it creates the steam in this environment that will properly process your jars. You do need to use your um, instruction book because it is not good for all recipes. There are specific recipes that that the steam canner will work for. So it's kind of fun to experiment with and um, by no means necessary for water bath canning. So a couple of the other things that if you're interested, you can let me know is a publication put out by Utah State University, um, how to avoid common mistakes when canning. And that's kind of a good one to refer to. And then several years ago, the craze was to can quick breads in a canning jar in your oven. And this kind of resurfaces every few years, like, oh, this is the hottest new topic. This is definitely not a safe canning practice. So if you are doing that, please stop. If, if you hear somebody that's going to give you a jar of canned quick bread, um, please kindly decline them. What they have found is that canned quick bread is a perfect environment for botulism to grow in. So um, just some more tips and tricks for you to use. Water bath canning is fun. It's um, it's a little more time consuming than um, drying and freezing, but it is fun and you can create wonderful recipes that you will enjoy all year long. So I hope you want to give it a try. And with that, we'll see you next time when we pressure can.